next question was uh, dealing with some of your priorities. What are some of the things that you'd like to see uh, uh, this association tackle and work on this year as uh, you're the, the president for the next, uh, the next year? Well, I think um, there's probably three or four things. Some of them are going to be more reactionary, things we're going to have to react to, and some of them are going to be proactive. I think uh, one of the things we do every year um, as the Florida Sheriff's Association is we know full well that our constituents as well as our legislature is going to look to us mm -hmm. uh, to provide input on those issues that impact the safety of our communities. And so that's very important to make sure that the legislature and our citizens know how we stand on particular issues that may come up, uh, positive or negative, that could impact it, law enforcement and our ability to keep the peace mm -hmm. in the counties. So that's obviously one priority. That's pretty much a standing priority for the sheriffs and the sheriff's association. Um, obviously, uh, we have a, a brand new sheriff's office coming online uh, over the next few years. Uh, and it's going to be a brand new sheriff in Miami-Dade County. And I think it's important for the uh, sheriffs and the sheriff's association to provide as much support as we can to that newly forming office of sheriff uh, to make sure that both the, the office of sheriff and the new sheriff is well prepared to respond to those uh, um, issues that are gonna come up. The citizens are gonna expect that sheriff to be able to respond to and handle in a, a manner that uh, is most appropriate using good common sense and so forth. So that, that's gonna be a huge challenge because it is, as you know, it's one of the biggest uh, metropolitan counties in the entire country and so that's going to be a uh, monumental task for that new sheriff's office and that new sheriff says lead, that is oh, leading yeah. that office we'll have to see how big you know the sheriff is whether or not the sheriff runs a jail that's a decision of the county but i think someone recently told me that the school system of miami-dade is the second largest school system in the country so that sheriff's office will be either the second third or fourth largest sheriff's office uh in our country in the whole country and whether so they I run think, the jail or not yeah exactly and i think that's going to be uh, uh that that's going to be a huge uh task for the sheriff's association as well as every sheriff in the state of florida to provide uh as much support as we possibly can not just in those times when the sheriff needs immediate assistance if something's going on but those daily issues that come up uh that is going to uh, uh weigh heavily on that new sheriff uh, making those decisions. And I think that's one of the uh, best things about the Sheriff's Association, as well as your form, uh, fe fellow sheriffs, is they're the only ones who truly know what you're going through. And uh, getting advice from them and getting advice from the Sheriff's Association is something that's, I think, going to be very important to that new sheriff. And so it's going to be exciting uh, to be, um, although, you know, uh, it's going to be, uh, my, I guess my tenure will probably be up before it is actually officially up and running, but obviously there's going to be a lot of things in place over the next year that are going to uh, uh, be in advance of that that we're going to have to deal with. And lastly, uh, very briefly, is uh, something that's near and dear to my heart is technology and DNA. Yes. And um, I think if we can get some of the technology put in our, our booking areas and jails that uh, will allow DNA uh, to be put into the system, the uh, nationwide system faster, it's gonna accomplish two things. One, it's gonna help us to solve crimes quicker. And number two, it's gonna relieve the Florida Department of Law Enforcement from doing very routine testing that really doesn't have to be done by a person, it can be done by a machine. And that will free up those people, those uh, lab technicians, uh, to do the testing on that evidence that we collect at the scene of crimes, um, because right now it can take um, a long time to get evidence, depending on how serious the crime is. It can take a while to get some of that evidence tested. And um, so if they can free up those resources, I think that's gonna be exciting. And hopefully, um, you know, uh, we'll be able to accomplish that in the next year. Uh, the, the issue is, of course, it is a little bit expensive, but I think the amount of labor savings will offset the cost of uh, some of those uh, rapid DNA machines that we're talking about putting in. Uh, you know, it'd be ideal if we could put them in every county, mm -hmm. but at least if we could get a good uh, percentage of them done, some of the bigger jails, um, it, would, it would go a long way to towards freeing up some of those resources with FDLE. And they're, uh, you know, they're very behind, but it's not their fault. It's yeah. just, it's overwhelmed with, you know, as our population increases, they have the same issues everybody else does, finding good people. And that's a very 
technical aspect of law enforcement and science right now is that testing of DNA. So if we can free some of those up, um, some of those resources rather free them up from FDLE, I think it's going to be a win for them, win for the sheriffs and win for law enforcement, of course, win for our citizens as well. No, absolutely. I, I agree 100%. I think the other thing we'd like to ask about the rapid DNA is if our listeners are not familiar with it, uh, kind of just walk us through, because what recently is my understanding that the uh, FBI has now allowed um, the uh, rapid DNA, the DNA that's captured in these rapid DNA um, devices to be uploaded into CODIS. CODIS right. is the system that the nationwide database okay. uh, and I can kind of equate it maybe it would be easier for your listeners to equate it to fingerprints you know it wasn't that long ago that every single fr- fingerprint that was taken somebody had to look on look at it under a magnifying glass <laughs> yeah. and compare it to a known sample um, and tell if that was a, a match and it was a very labor-intensive process well now we, we have what we call APHIS and it's all done electronically the fingerprints are taken electronically uh, those that are taken in booking obviously the crime scene we still have to lift them just like or take a picture of them just like we have in the past but it in booking it's electronically taken and it's instantly uploaded into what they call AFIS, which is the nationwide database for fingerprints. Mm-hmm. And um, so we can instantly know if somebody, if their fingerprint is in the system, we know who they are. Well, that's basically what we're looking for as far as DNA. Uh, you take a sample from somebody's cheek, the inside of their cheek, and you basically, I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but basically you just take that Q-tip uh, and you put it in this machine and the machine goes through the testing and it compares that DNA to what's already in CODIS Mm. to make sure the person is who they say they are. And if there is an unknown sample in there, maybe you had a very horrific crime where DNA was taken and you have a full DNA profile, but you don't know who the bad guy is yet. Well, in that booking station, you would know within an hour or two if that's your bad guy that committed a rape or a murder Mm -hmm. or something two years ago. Uh, As it stands now, that sample has to be sent to FDLE, and it can literally take weeks, sometimes longer, to get that sample into CODIS and identify that person. Well, oftentimes that person has been bailed out. And of course, if they've been committing those serious crimes, they're going to be a lot harder to find. Um, So if you have somebody in jail, you want to know that they've committed a crime. The same thing with uh, those people that are in the country illegally, Um, you know, being able to identify them, particularly if they've committed a serious crime in the past, identify that person before they have a chance to bail out or before they're released um, is, is critical to making sure they're held accountable because once you release somebody who's in the country illegally, um, they're very transient and they're not like most of our criminals. They stay in the county. They could go anywhere in the country oftentimes to get away from that uh, justice. And so I think it'll be very important in that area as well. No, absolutely. It'll be twofold to be able to help uh, safely identify those people who are in your jail, but also solve a lot of crimes as well. Exactly. Not just solve crimes that you already have DNA on, but the new crimes that you're sending that DNA to mm-hmm. FDLE uh, gives them more time to uh, to process that and get that in the system yeah. faster. Because the quicker that's in the system, obviously, the better, because they may have that person already in the system. And if you have an unsolved rape or a murder, uh, the faster you can get it tested and the faster you can get it in the uh, CODIS and identify that person and said, this individual committed that crime, uh, the better it is for law enforcement.